I'm here with Professor Lawrence Baker at Stanford Medical School, and uh, what, what we're going to talk about now is uh, just like the overview of the healthcare system. What is the healthcare system? Yeah, and, and who's in it? And who's in it? And what are they doing? I think I could give a, a go at it. Go for it. And then correct me. Okay. And expose my ignorance. Okay. <laughs> so, so clearly, you know, you have your, your kind of your providers. That those would be your your doctors and and nurses and all the rest. And, hospitals, I mean, hospitals, pharmacies, all kinds of people. Okay. Providers. So yeah. everyone who's providing healthcare. Mm -hmm. So that's right over there. So that's hospitals, doctors, pharmacies, all the rest. Yep. And then they are, they are providing the healthcare to someone. Yep. So that those would be the patients. Let me do that in another color. Yep. Call them patients. Yeah, some, sometimes you get details like you know, people become patients after they need health care, but some people just have a question. They're not really patients. They're just asking. Okay. What would you, you know, call them then? Call them population. Or population. Or so just the population of the world, yeah. of the country or whatever, people, of the yeah. oh, people, people. And then on the other end, then, uh, then you, someone has to pay for this. Someone and, has to pay and, for this. And so for the most part, this is insurers. Yep. Insurance companies. In, in the old days, like if you go back 100 years, we didn't really have insurers. We had patients and, and providers, and patients would... If they had a question, they had a concern, they go to the provider, they make some deal, pay them some money, do some service for them, and work it out. Right. And we got insurance companies really only in the last hundred years, maybe really starting in the U.S. in maybe 1930, 1940, they started to become popular. So that's kind of a newer innovation, right. and those three things work together. And the general term, and this is a word I've seen a lot, and sometimes it's a little confusing because it's very close to payer. It's like you, you hear that kind of these payors, these yeah. payors, and that, that would be including, that's anyone who's paying for the, paying for the service. Yes. And that insurance companies would be included there. Right. So we have, we call them hate payers. Sometimes we call them health plans because they arrange for some of the care that people get. And, you know, payers could be private private companies, private insurance companies, or they could be government right. payers, government uh, pr insurance companies like right. Medicare. And the insurance companies themselves, they're not doing this, you know, just out of the goodness of their heart. Someone is paying them. Right. And for the most part in the United States, it, it tends to be employers. So, right. So we've we made another arrow on your diagram here. It would be... Uh, from the population or maybe from the patients to the insurance companies that pr provides the money for the insurance companies to use to pay for the provider. So patients might buy an insurance company or buy an insurance company, buy an yes. insurance policy. Only if they're very well healed. <laughs> Some yes. of them buy the whole company. There are a few. Right? But um, <laughs> patients might buy their own policy, go buy an insurance policy, pay them a premium directly. Right. The insurance company collects that money. Or for most people, they work for an employer. The employer makes the arrangement to buy that insurance uh, and then implicitly charges the population, the patients for that, maybe directly by having them contribute some of their salary, right. maybe implicitly by just reducing the amount right. of cash they give them every month and instead giving them this insurance I policy. See. So people do that. And the, the other piece that's floating around in here is that in some cases the population pays taxes to the government oh, right, that, right. Then, that then functions essentially as an insurer like the Medicare program where there's... Uh, insurance provided to people, it's paid for by taxes. So there's right. some different funds flows going around here, but always money going from patients to insurers through employers right. through taxes by direct payments. Those insurers collecting the money and then paying for a bunch of the care that's provided by the providers. Right. Uh, and that's the basic arrangement. There's one more tiny piece, which is mm -hmm. that sometimes patients pay the doctors or the hospitals directly. Yes. You know, you go, you have a $20 copayment. Right. And so there's a small payment that goes back and forth. Right. Your copay is kind of there just so that it kind of makes the insurance company feel good that you're not just using it willy-nilly, that you have to pay your, you know, whatever, $10 or $50. Absolutely. So insurers show know that once they start paying the providers for the care and the patient says it's totally free, people might use stuff that, you know, might might be worth a little tiny bit, but it costs a lot for everybody to pay for. So if you put a copayment on there, it makes people think twice about using things that they don't really need very much. Right. That makes complete sense. And then within this ecosystem, you know, we, we hear a lot about HMOs. Uh, that, at my perception, is that that's a combination of the insurance company and the, the provider. It's kind of in one package. Right. So over time, the U.S. has had different kinds of insurers mm -hmm. out there. In the private market especially, there's been a lot of innovation in the last 30 or 40 years in types of insurers that are out there. So we have different insurers that uh, have behaved in different ways as we've gone through those evolutionary cycles. Mm -hmm. So one version of that is what we call an HMO, a health mm -hmm. maintenance organization, uh, and that's really just jargon. You have to dig into it to figure out right. what it means. But uh, in a lot of cases, what that is is an insur a company that's acting as insurance, so you pay a premium to them if you're a patient right. or a, per a person, and you buy some coverage. And then 
uh, they'll cover your care, but they'll do that by trying to integrate themselves with the providers. Right. And so the organizations either are integrated because the HMO hires doctors directly or maybe right. owns the hospitals, like uh, Kaiser Permanente, for example. Right. Or, uh, in some cases, it's a contractual relationship. Oh, right, that's not right. exactly the so same. So not all of them are as tightly linked to, like, a Kaiser, where it's like you go to, you go to this building that says Kaiser on it, and, and that's where your doctor is. It, right. it, it could be doctors just have their practices, but they're tightly linked with a, I think that's how, what, Blue Shield or, or one of those? Yeah, Blue Shield or Aetna or Cigna, right. some of these different companies. Uh, and, and you can start to dig into the details, and every one will be a little bit different. Right. from the other, and, but and they're, they're contractual relationships. Right. And the difference, and I think this is something everyone faces when they you know sign up with insurance with their employer, I had to do it recently, is you know they always say you have to pick HMO versus, PPP, versus PPO, PPO, and they're within the same policy. And so my perception is HMO is... Uh, they, they, you, have a, you have a set list of doctors that I'm, they've probably pre-negotiated pricing with. Yeah, so the difference between HMOs and PPOs gets... Um, you gets a little bit into the into okay. The detail, I don't want to get too, we can, too into the uh, we weeds. can sort of think about it in the way that right. you're talking about it. So an HMO will have a list of doctors that you're supposed to see, right. and you'll have to go see doctors on that list. In a stereotypical one, if you don't see the doctors on that list, uh, the, the insurance company is not going to pay for your right. care. You're going to pay right. yourself. And in a stereotypical HMO, there's going to be a fairly tight management between the insurance right. company and the doctors about what's going right. to be done, what's allowable, and so on. And in the most in a, tightly linked case, they'll be like the same. They'll be the, the same be employed company. by the company. Right, yeah. that's like, right, Kaiser. As you kind of think about it as a spectrum, if you move a little bit away from that to a PPO, what's right. happening in PPO is you're still going to get a list. Right. So you're going to be encouraged to see those doctors, but maybe there'll be a little more flexibility. Like right. if you decided not to see someone on the list, the, the plan would still pay some amount, maybe not as much as they would if you saw someone on a list, but something, whereas in an HMO, maybe nothing. And the plan will probably work a little less hard at managing what those doctors are doing to try and limit access to, say, high-cost right. services. HMO will tend to work harder. PPO tends to work right. a little less hard. So it's a little bit of a spectrum. You're kind of moving from more managed and more concentrated uh, to a little less managed, but still more so than in a, the system we had, say, in the 50s or 60s, where anybody went to any doctor and any doctor did whatever they wanted, uh, and the insurance company just paid the bill and there was no right. integration. So it's a little bit of a... So that's the main motivation why insurance companies are trying to get kind of more more integrated with the providers is because, just like you said, in the, in the 50s and 60s, you have the provider providing a service, and obviously the patient would like the service, and then you have a third party paying for it. And so there's no check on... You know, the, the person deciding on the service and the person getting it says, yeah, let's get more service and someone else is, is right. And so right. That, that, so that's just, so we created a, a big issue. Insurance companies are kind of an interesting thing in a health policy world because we, we have to have them. Right. We have to have them to manage the risk associated with getting sick. You can get sick right. today and get a huge bill. And so we can't leave people on their own for that. We got right. to have insurance companies, but as soon as you create insurance companies, and I can have implicitly all my neighbors pay for the health care that I want, right. then I might start using things that uh, turn out to be inefficient. And so right. you got to you got to have them, insurance companies, but uh, you got to manage what happens when you have them also. And so that's the integration between providers or co-payments and utilization review and all these things are basically attempts by insurance companies to try and manage what economists would call the moral hazard, the u using additional yes. services that you don't necessarily need because everybody else is going to pay for it for you. Makes makes complete sense. Oh, well, thanks. That makes, makes a ton of sense.